Okay, it's winter. My garden is covered in snow. I'm not doing much planting this time of year, but there are many things we can do in the winter for our garden, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. If you are enrolled in my online gardening course, be sure to log in to the course to watch this video there, because as I go through all of these topics, I will be linking to them in the course where you can learn more about how to do all of the things I talk about. If you're not enrolled in my course, I'll give you a link below where you can check it out if you're interested. The most fun thing to do in the winter is planning this year's garden. And it does work a little better the more experience you get because you will know more about your soil already. You may have drawn your garden, measured it and drawn it out and made a map of your garden that you can work with. You may have taken notes on last year's garden. That's all helpful. But even if it's your first year, you can pull out some paper and start to plan where do you want to plant everything this year and it's so much fun it's thinking what am I going to be planting where am I going to buy seeds if I'm buying seeds do I need to build anything raised beds or trellises and do I need to buy anything to do that any tools it's really fun to use the winter to do this dreaming Winter is the main time for buying seeds, and I like to buy my seeds online. It's a lot of fun to do that. If you're more old fashioned and you like to look through a seed catalog, which is a lot of fun too, just make sure you're ordering those catalogs by midwinter so you get them in time to do your buying. The longer you've been gardening, the less seed you need to buy every year because hopefully you're saving more and more of your own seed. But still, there's always something to buy every year and it's a huge part of the fun of gardening is trying some new things every year. You wanna buy early so you have the most choice before things start selling out. And you want to buy locally as much as possible because those seeds will be more attuned to your climate. And that doesn't mean your local big box store because those seeds, many of them are not grown locally and they tend to buy the cheapest seed. It's really not good seed. So you want to find local garden centers may have some local seed, but also local seed growers you can buy right from them. It's obviously fun to support our local businesses, but it's also really good for you is to get the seed that was grown in your climate so it's ready for your climate. The next thing that happens in winter is starting some seeds indoors. And there will be some things that you will sow directly into the soil outdoors, but some things we start inside. Examples are like brassicas, your broccoli and cauliflower, and your nightshades like tomatoes and peppers. Those we start inside four to eight weeks before we will plant them outside. So sometime in the middle of winter. And I encourage you to find a planting calendar for your area to help you figure out when you will start these seeds. And I've seen these calendars for all over the world, you have to find one for your part of the world. I've seen them in Australia and Europe and everywhere. In the United States, one of my favorites that I found online is the Burpee calendar, and you can use it in Canada too. But what you do is you have to enter a zip code. So if you're in Canada, you just need to find a zip code that has the same USDA zone as yours. You enter that in. Then what you can do is select which crops you will be growing and it will give you a chart of like when to start them inside or when to sow them outside and it's really helpful. What I like to do is as soon as you just select one vegetable, it will give you this option. It says click here to view and print dates and you just click that and then it gives you this huge many page table of all the vegetables and herbs and other things that you can just download and print it if you want and then you have it as a reference. It's really nice to have this. Another thing that often happens in the winter towards the end of winter is pruning, especially your big heavy pruning. If you do that, it happens in the winter, especially with deciduous trees and shrubs, you can really see their form when they don't have leaves. And there's just not much else happening in the garden yet. So it's a good time to focus on your pruning. Even in hot climates, a lot of pruning happens during this time. So your fruit trees and shrubs, your canes like raspberries, your vines like your grapes, your deciduous trees, even most evergreen trees. A lot of this happens now. 
any sort of flowering shrubs that flower later in like late spring or summer, they tend to flower on new wood. You can prune them now and they will still flower this year. The one thing that we often don't prune right now is plants that flower on old wood. That is a lot of your things that flower right in the early spring, like forsythia. You wait until after those flower to do the pruning so you get to see the flowers first. All of this said, I will say there are occasionally exceptions for some trees, so it's really nice for you to make a checklist of your trees and shrubs to find out when it's best to prune them. Because like, I know for a lot of oaks, those are pruned earlier in the winter to prevent disease. There are some trees that are best pruned in the summer for the same reason, so it's nice to make your own checklist of what is best for you. But a lot of pruning happens right now. There are also some odds and ends things I like to do in the winter. Well, I always have plants growing inside, especially in the winter, I go beyond the ornamentals and I'm trying to grow something I can eat every day, like lettuces and other greens and herbs. I tend to do a little more of that in the winter. But then there's things like if you're into effective microorganisms, I always am activating that in the winter so I have it ready for spring for use in the garden. Making bokashi, winter is a great time to make a big batch of bokashi so you're ready to use that throughout the year. Or worm composting, you can start a worm compost inside in the winter. So yeah, winter is a nice time to do these types of tasks when you don't get around to maybe when you're busy in the garden for the rest of the year. So yeah, I think though the, the main ones in the winter are planning this year's garden, buying seeds, starting seeds, and if you do pruning, pruning often happens in the winter. So that's it. I will give you some links to check out down below, and I will give you a link to check out right here.